These days, if you want to locate any geographical location on planet Earth, one only needs to tap the details into Google Maps. From streets, parks, rivers, mountains, cities to entire countries. Now let's give the island we are looking for a crack and see what comes up within Mr. Google. Gente Hermosa, that's Spanish for beautiful people. The G is pronounced with an H. Here we are. Okay, we now know it's called a Swains Island near Tokelau, a dependency of New Zealand since 1926. In what was called the Union Islands Group, the local name for Swains being Alosenga. Well, that was an easy one to research. Only, there's also another island called Hente Hermosa, Rekahonga, a similar sized, that's to say tiny, atoll, part of the Cook Islands, 1,200 kilometres north of Rarotonga, with the real island of the beautiful people, and please step forward, which one is it? Well, that argument has been going on since approximately 1606, a wee while, and we have this gentleman to blame. Spanish navigator Pedro Fernandez de Quiros. Having received a personal blessing as well as lots of loot to help fund an expensive escapade such as this from none other than Pope Clement VIII. Quiros underwent some sort of epiphany, believing he was blessed by God to discover Terra Australis and the unknown southern land. Sorry, that's the only map I could find for that place. A fantastic navigator and sailor for his time, he was no man-manager, and his delusion, God had spoken to him, when I mean, texting would have been a lot cheaper, would change history for 80% of the viewers of this video. You see, he relied on God to whisper in his lug hole to guide him with the important decisions on which route to take, and with it, a near escape for all New Zealanders. In 1603, De Quiros left Spain with his vessel the Pedro on his first leg of his journey of discovery. Peru, where he was to be resupplied and joined by two other vessels. One of those would be captained by a sailor with the name of De Torres, whose exploits would go on to eclipse the expedition leader De Quiros. The whole expedition was almost curtailed before it even began, when the Pedro got shipwrecked in the West Indies and needed repairs that took virtually a whole year to complete. That delay meant the three ships with 160 men never left Peru till December 1605. On that stamp there you can see where he went on his 10 month journey. And this was roughly where he charted he would be going, the original plan. Hable Espanol. Yes, he was on the money with his prediction that if he headed south enough, he would bang into something. That first something happened to be none other than New Zealand. And then for reasons only known to himself, he changed plans. Gracias a Dios. He was clearly put through to the Church of England department by mistake that day. This is where Torres, de Torres, went after getting separated from de Quiros in a storm within a whisker of spotting Australia all but 25 kilometres on a clear day. He now has a strait named after him. Now I've painted that picture. Let's get back to our story. Let's see what the New Zealand online text collection has to say about De Quiros and Torres starting three months in.
Indeed, some of that was actually true. And some of that has also been proved to be incorrect. What is true is De Queros did discover Vanuatu and 13 other islands. The Gilberts, uh, a few of those. On a fair few of those islands, he'd shoot first and ask questions later. One report I read was he spotted three fishermen in the shallows looking somewhat bemused and animated at the sight of giant ships rolling to the bay. He ordered them killed as a show of power, and took their bodies onto the shore, christened the corpses and buried them as Catholics. The Spanish version of how to win friends and influence people never got much traction. What the report didn't say that you've just read was why De Queros didn't continue eastward across the Pacific like Torres, why he did a Yui instead and went to Mexico. That's because his crew had had a guts full of the captain and sailing. They had threatened to beach the Pedro on the first inhabitable island with a considerable woman and a decent feed. When he got back to Spain, he was like a broken record, taking his ordained mission a bit too seriously for the Spanish authorities and even the Catholic Church. In short, he'd become mentally unstable. Like out of the pages of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy's B Ark, the royal family appeared to have relented to his seven years of pleas for a second crack, sent him back to Peru and told him to wait there while they put together another fleet. Then, as soon as he was over the horizon, breathed a sigh of relief as they got rid of the crank. In the end, he never made it. He fell ill and died in Panama on the way. His travels were ultimately superseded by other explorers. What islands he landed on, he hadn't exactly been greeted with open arms. And his less than perfect and inconsistent records weren't poured over for another 300 years. For all that time, maps of the day indicated Hinte Hermosa, Swains and Olasenga were essentially the same place. The map you are looking at, or Carta, is a German one from 1859. Here are some other examples. It wasn't until about 17 years ago people drew all the historic records together to make some sense of the places Queros and Torres identified. This wasn't a case of lack of information, this was a case of a contradictory information, some of which had only come to light last century, some of which we will never know exactly, like if he did discover Pitcairn Island. Bad navigation, coupled with the islands that tended to look like each other, didn't really help the case, only some bits would stick. Between the ships there were five people chronicling what they saw and where they were in leagues and latitudes. Modern navigational knowledge, currents etc. meant the wheat was finally being sorted from the chaff when it came to Hinti Humosa. Things now pointed directly at Rakahunga, way up in the Cooks. To add to the confusion, Hinti Humosa wasn't the universal name used for the same place i.e. a modern day Arakahunga. De Queros also called it Peregrino, which means pilgrim. On the other hand, Torres labelled it Matanga, and that is a lovely quaint name for an island, because it means kill. Either way, he or they stepped ashore there on the 2nd of March 1606. Why the handle Hinte Hermosa stuck? appears to boil down to the combined reports by both de Queros and a Franciscan monk, Martin de Munilla. Indeed, the Vatican had a lot riding on this voyage and wanted a representative calling the shots, making sure when villages were being laid waste to, the innocent victims would at least die Catholic. Besides, they had a 14-year-old cabin boy on de Queros's vessel with a nervous disposition and Monia was kind enough to comfort him at night. Here's what the good friar had to say about the natives on the island. Mm. 
that's what De Quiros noted. Clearly, our Polynesians are not white. What he is probably describing were the chief's daughters, the custom of which was before marriage they were kept in seclusion away from the grubby hands of the local chaps. These vestal virgins were adorned with special oils and only allowed out of their burets at nights. And they were pale in appearance. Many of the other descriptions of life on Rakahunga in 1606 were equally bemusing, the population being 500, currently it's just 50. But that could also be said for Swains slash Olosenga, they are roughly the same size, neither of them could sustain those sort of numbers. Having a lake in the middle, which is one of the descriptions given, could also apply to both. What ultimately gave Araki Hunga the nod as being Hente Humusa, though, boiled down to its position, 10 degrees south or thereabouts, and the average sailing speed from the logs, Swains was simply too far away to have been reached on the 2nd of March 1606 at the speed they were travelling. There you have it, Hente Humusa Island is in the Cooks. Or so we thought. Despite all the evidence, and there are those that still champion Swains, and some of them must work at Google in the Maps Department. Before I get to say the mandatory, bye for now. In exactly the same area, Upper Cooks, a mere 250 years later, is the story of Sawaro treasure. Real life pirates, rogues, fortunes gained and lost. A yarn you wouldn't believe unless you knew it was all true. It's one of my personal faves. It's late in the piece, and time to say thanks to all my subscribers and passers-by. At the same time, unite together and praise God for De Quiros hearing that voice in his head to change course back in 1606. Bye for now.